So after 11 years and hundreds of cycles, my Makita drill batteries have finally started to give up on life. So I want to explore the possibility of repacking batteries with brand new lithium cells. But that left me with a problem. I don't have a battery spot welder and soldering batteries is a big no-no since that involves gently roasting your cells with a soldering iron leading to reduced life expectancy or in worst case scenario even an explosion. Not to mention the mechanical connection solder offers isn't very strong. So I reached out to Keen Lab and asked if they'd be interested in sponsoring one of their K-Weld kits. And they did! At just 167 euros it offers some pretty impressive figures. Wide input voltage range of 4 to 30 volts DC and it's able to switch up to 2000 amps of current. It has a super easy to use interface, complete control over the amount of spot welding energy up to a ludicrous 500 joules. Welding is as simple as pressing the electrodes against the nickel strip, press the foot pedal and you'll be laying down quality spot welds like a pro. Included in the kit is all the necessary screws and hardware to assemble the K-Weld. A set of 8 gauge welding leads with solid copper electrodes with replaceable tips and a pair of power input leads, a 300 amp rated fuse and a set of brass bus bars, a foot pedal, an LCD screen and lastly the K-Weld circuit board. The PCB comes with all the components pre-installed apart from the LCD which attaches with just 4 screws. Six MOSFETs connected in parallel act as a switch to send a pulse of power to the electrodes. Individually these MOSFETs are rated for a crazy amount of current, so having six of them in parallel should make for a very robust platform. Let's move on to assembly. KeenLab provides an easy to follow set of assembly instructions which you can download from their site. First I installed the M3 brass standoffs and M3 screws onto the PCB. I then installed the M2.5 standoffs and screws onto the LCD screen. The LCD screen can now be installed onto the PCB, making sure to carefully line up the LCD pins. Now I can install the bus bars using the included M4 screws, nuts and washers. There is a larger M6 hole at one end of each bus bar, so pay attention to orientation when installing the bars. Before installing the washers, note that there is a smooth side and sharp side to each washer. The smooth side should be facing the PCB to avoid cutting into the copper plating on the PCB. After installing both bus bars, I tightened all the screws down. Next I took two of the M6 screws and nuts and installed them in these holes. Two washers are then added, followed by the fuse. Then the positive input cable is attached and a nut on top secures everything. One of the electrode leads are connected to the other side of the fuse and secured with a nut on top. The negative input lead is connected to the bus bar using an M6 screw, washer and nut. Then the other electrode lead is connected to the other bus bar. The foot pedal cable is stripped back to reveal three wires. The white wire is common, the red is normally open and black is normally closed. We won't be needing the black wire so that can be cut short. The wires can be twisted and tinned before installing them in the terminal. However I decided this was a good excuse to try out my feral crimper. Lastly, a cable tie is installed to act as a strain relief for the foot pedal cable. And that completes the assembly. Now we need an enclosure. You can buy a laser cut acrylic case from Keen Lab or download a set of STL files and 3D print your own enclosure, which is the option I went with. I fired up my printer, installed some filament in the correct schematics teal colour and got printing. And I'm pretty pleased with the end result. If you decide to go with the 3D printed case, you don't need to install the M3 standoff, so I ended up removing mine.
Now I need to make up some new power input leads. I bought some 8 gauge cable and a few cable lugs. Since we're dealing with really high current, up to 2000 amps, soldering the lugs isn't something I'd recommend. Ideally you'd want to crimp the lugs onto the cable. After crimping there is often a burr left on the lug. Use a file to remove most of the burr then add a piece of heat shrink over the lug. I installed the new input leads onto the bus bars, reattached the electrode leads and foot pedal cable before installing the K weld into my new enclosure. The length of the cables must be kept as short as possible. This graph describes the maximum allowable current for any given cable length between 1 to 2 meters. You'll notice shorter cable length means you can pass more current through the K-weld. That's because shorter cables have less inductance which means less flyback. So if you want to take full advantage of the 2000 amp rating, keep your overall cable length below 1 meter. I measured my electrode leads to be around 450mm long. I then measured my input leads to be around 300mm long. You need to count both input and electrode leads when calculating wire length. So in my example it would look like this. 2 times 450 equals 900mm and 2 times 300 equals 600mm. Then combine both numbers. So 600 plus 900 equals 1500, or in other words 1.5 meters. Going back to the chart, if we make a vertical line at 1.5 meters of cable length, you can see I'm limited to around 1600 amps of current. Anything more than this and I might damage the K-weld. And with that done, now we need to talk about a power source. Now the K-weld has a fairly wide input voltage range of 4 to 30 volts, and it can handle, as we've mentioned, up to 2000 amps of current with the sweet spot being 1500 amps and with a minimum of 800 amps. Anything below 800 and the K-weld won't allow you to weld. Basically there are two options. Select a LiPo or lead acid battery from the recommended list or the better option in my opinion is to use super or ultra capacitors which Keen Lab sell as a separate kit set if you're interested. Old time subscribers might remember this. It's a super capacitor bank I built to replace a lead acid battery. I built this many moons ago, back when my fashion sense was questionable at best, and my camera equipment was meh. I opted to replace the alloy bus bars with copper ones, which will reduce the overall series resistance of my capacitor bank, and hopefully get me closer to the magical 1500 amp threshold. The only way to limit current is through voltage control, so I set my power supply to 8 volts and charged up the caps. Later I can increase the voltage until I hit the 1500 amp sweet spot if needed. The cables are directly bolted to the super caps, which kinda scares me because if I do something wrong and need to switch off the power quickly, well it just isn't gonna happen. However, throwing caution to the wind and having my mother on speed dial, I proceeded anyway by connecting my power supply to the caps to continually top up the caps as I weld. When you power up the K-weld for the first time, it'll prompt you to do a calibration before you can weld. Calibration is simple. Press the dial, the screen will then say open, which means you need to isolate the electrodes. Then press the foot pedal. Holding the foot pedal down, the screen will cycle through the test results. After you release the foot pedal, the screen will now say short, which means you need to firmly press the electrodes together. It's recommended to firmly press the tips together like this. Then press the foot pedal down. Once again, holding the pedal down, the screen cycles through the test results. If you fail to make a firm connection between the electrodes, you may see sparks. If you do, repeat the calibration process again. With my caps charged to 8 volts, the current was just over 1200 amps. So with a successful calibration, the screen now displays the amount of joules ready to weld with. The rotary dial is velocity sensitive and tuned to absolute perfection. Pressing the dial enters the menu system which allows you to select between welding modes, update the firmware and so on. Scroll down to cable length and press the dial. 
you should enter your overall cable length that we calculated earlier in the video. In my example it's 1.5 meters. Then press the dial to confirm your changes. And with that done we're ready to weld. I bought two different pure nickel strips to test with. One is 0.15 millimeter and the other is 0.2 millimeter thick. I grabbed a few old 18650s that have expired so I could mess around with various weld settings. I set the welding pulse to 30 joules and used a piece of 0.15mm nickel strip. I firmly pressed the electrodes into the nickel strip and pressed the foot pedal. And I have to say the quality of welds look excellent. I placed another set of welds and then tried to rip off the nickel metal strip. It put up a fair fight and as you can see the welds weren't the weak point, rather the nickel ripped around the welds which is a good indication of a quality weld. I adjusted the pulse to 50 joules and experimented with the thicker 0.2mm nickel strip. This time the strip was even harder to try and rip off. Eventually the nickel ripped around the welds once again. And this is only at 50 joules. Remember the K-weld goes up to a mind-blowing 500 joules. At 50 joules, performing three welds in quick succession does start to drain the capacitor bank. After a few seconds my power supply replenishes the caps but if you plan on doing dozens of welds in quick succession you may want to consider investing in a high current power supply. But for my leisurely pace my 5 amp power supply is doing just fine for my needs. The K-Weld offers great value for money. In terms of raw power there isn't anything else quite like it on the market for the same price point. Sure there are cheaper options out there but if you read reviews you'll often hear people are disappointed with the weld quality or the inability to weld 0.2mm or thicker strips. Something the K-Weld does with absolute ease. Also because the K-Weld measures its output in joules the welds are consistent even if you're welding in quick succession with voltage fluctuations. It's a great approach to achieving consistent welds. So the K-Weld gets a 10 out of 10 in my book. So a big thanks to Keen Lab for sponsoring me with their K-Weld kit set. If you're interested in purchasing one for yourself, there'll be links down in the video's description. Also, thank you very much for watching, and if you found the video useful, please give it a like, it'd be appreciated. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section down below. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button for more future videos just like this. Thank you very much to my Patreons as well, and I will see you in the next video. Bye for now.